What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you an awesome update that Apple came out with for Final Cut Pro 10, and that is the tracking feature along with other you know, awesome features as well. Also guys, be sure to check out my Selfie store in the description of this video. I currently have two packs available for purchase. So if you guys are wanting to add transitions in a matter of seconds, click this one here, which is going to include 24K drag and drop transitions for Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and more. This is also M1 compatible and no plugins or any special type of installation is required for this. And I already made a video on that. If you guys wanna watch it, I'll also have it linked down below of this video. I wanna track his face here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna split this clip here because I just want to focus on this clip. I'm gonna go over to the text. So say I want to add text to, to his face or you wanna track his face using text. So we're gonna go over to text basic title and I'm going to drag this onto our video and if you hover over certain areas you can either drag it on an object you can do it on a face or really whatever Final Cut Pro 10 uh, manages to capture in this video so we're going to do his face so let go and when you let go it's going to show you a grid with another circle similar to the mask option in this case what we're going to do is trim the text so I'm going to trim the text to this length for the video because it's a little too long. And now that we have that, you're gonna notice that we can double click on the title to change the text as always. So we're gonna type in Nardo Wick. Now you can reposition this wherever you want on the screen. It doesn't have to be here. It can be really anywhere you want to. And you're gonna notice nothing happens. So we have to actually track his face. So select the title and you're gonna click on, right now it's set to transform. But if you click on tracker, this is a new uh, little button that you can use. So click on tracker. And now that you have this selected, it will take you to the tracking option. If I zoom in so you can see a little bit better, I'm gonna go to 200%. You're gonna notice that we have a gray circle. What this will do is if you click and drag outwards, or inwards, it will either make it round by dragging it inwards, or it will make it, you know, like a hard uh, edge or corner. It can go from a square to a circle. So I'm gonna go with a squ uh, circle because it, you know, it's tracking his face. And this will just kind of automatically adjust its scale by itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit analyze. This will analyze in both directions. So we're gonna hit this, and it will analyze in real time as you just saw there. So now we can kind of skim through and see what it did. As you can see, it's, it perfectly tracked his face. Now that you have that set, we're gonna go back to fit and we're gonna go over to this down arrow. So right now we have it set to face track and you can also do new tracker from Nardo Wick or whatever the video you have in the timeline is called. And this will create a new tracker from that. So we can go over to transform and the transform will allow you to uh, change the text of this one. So you can either make it bigger and you can also change the text. I'm going to change this hideous font from Helvetica to Proxima Nova because I think Helvetica is not my favorite font. However, if you like it, all props to you, but I'm not a fan of it. So I'm going to go back to Proxima Nova and I'm going to change this to black or bold and you can increase the size. You can do everything as you would here. But now if we go back and I push play, it's going to kind of track his face. Now, of course, it's a little bit wonky here because of the rotation. So to disable that, you can go over to the bottom under the tracking feature. So you just have to go over to the video inspector tab. Under transform, you're gonna see this little new icon. So click on this. This will allow you to reset all of the settings for this particular parameter, in this case, the transform, and go over to rotation. And right now you're gonna see it's checked. When it's checked, it means that it's going to use the position, the rotation and the scale to create the tracking result, I suppose. So I don't want the tracking to have rotation, so I'm gonna have this unchecked. So now if I push play, you're gonna notice there's no rotation whatsoever. The only thing that is changing is the position as you see here, because we have this enabled. You can also do scale, but when you do click scale, this will change the whole X, Y, and Z properties, which does make the text warped or whatever you have tracked here warped, which is I think a bug in this new update, which I think that will fix soon. Now you can also use this on an object. I wanna add the squid game mask because I just thought it's kind of funny. So I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm gonna trim this and delete it. And I wanna use this mask onto his face. So I wanna track it. Click on the bottom clip and you can also add another tracker. Right now we have this one that we just created, which is the face track. So we can just select this and go to the transform hit the down arrow and go to the face track. That way you don't have to redo it all over again. And then all you gotta do is just make it smaller. 
and position it right over his face. And if I push play, it'll track it. That's one way, of course, like let's say you wanted to use this instead of text. You just drag this onto your video and it will do the same exact thing. So if I let go, it will track it to his face. Just click analyze. Now, another cool thing you can do is if I click done and I go to the bottom, you're gonna have the tracker. So you have a plus button and you also have the same settings as you did up here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the beginning. We're gonna click on the plus button to add a tracking grid. This will allow you to track anything in this video. So say you wanna track his face, just make sure you scale this down to a relative size, so something like this. And I'm also going to make this round. Once you hit analyze, it will automatically track your subject. So in this case, we're tracking his face. So now if you click done and you add the object that you wanna track, in this case, this PNG image, of Squid Game, I'm gonna delete this and make it so it's the same length. And I'm gonna go over to Transform, click this button here. Make sure you're on the Transform tool and not under the Crop because the uh, Tracking button will not appear. So you're gonna click on the Tracker and when you click on the Tracker, this does actually add another Tracker, so just make sure you don't do that. Just make sure you click on the down arrow and select Object Track. And now if we go back, you're gonna see it's tracking to his face. So now we got, all we got to do is decrease the size or go over into the transform and do the same thing there. Or you can click in the transform button here. Same thing. So I'm going to make this smaller. And again, I do not want it to rotate. So we're going to turn that off by making sure rotation is turned off and adjust the scale. And once you're happy with the result, push play and it'll look just like that. Super cool. Say you want to add a burning car effect. And again, it's very simple. So it's literally almost the same thing. So I'm going to delete this and show you how to do it with this clip here. Very short clip, about a second long. So what I want to do is use a ENG image or an alpha channel clip. We're going to drag this right above our video and I'm going to trim this down. And now that we have that, we're going to have to make this uh, flame smaller. So we're going to hit transform. I'm gonna actually squeeze this in a little bit and I'm gonna make it smaller and I'm gonna zoom in to 200%. I'm gonna place this right above or right in front of the area that we want to create this effect on. I think it looks good there. Once you're here, you're gonna hit done and you're gonna go over to fit and you're gonna hit transform. Make sure you have the clip selected. Go to transform, you're gonna hit the down arrow and you can do new tracker from or what you can do is just click tracker and this will bring up a new grid as you would in the settings here. But now we're gonna go zoom in to about 200%, make the grid smaller to cover the actual car in this case. You can also temporarily disable this, which I would do. So I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm gonna analyze forwards for this area and see what that will look like. So that looks pretty good. You're gonna notice right here, it jumps for some reason. I'm not sure why. Again, the tracking feature is new, so there might be small bugs. And depending on the video you're using, you might have to go back in there and tweak some of the keyframes. But I mean, over, overall, I did an excellent job. So once you're here, re-enable the top clip and we're gonna have to add a mask to this clip here. You're gonna notice that we have this little uh, chain link, which means that these two are linked together. This can be useful, but if you have this unchecked, the transform will now be independent from the tracking feature. So you can uh, say you're using a mask this will not be the same uh, as the tracking uh, mask, if that makes sense. So the transform, we're gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna undo that though. Just I just wanted to show you guys what that does. But we're gonna add a keyframe under position. So right where it moves, which is about here. So I'm gonna add a keyframe where it happens. So under position, add a keyframe and just move this back down and skim through and make sure that this really is staying where it needs to be. Once we're happy with the uh, placement, we're gonna hit uh, done. And we're gonna have to add a mask because we want this flame to be behind the car. So we're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna go down to masks and add a draw mask on the flame. And then now make sure that the hit is at the beginning. Make your selection around the vehicle. Then we're gonna invert the mask and I'm going to create a feather so it's a bit soft. Click back on the draw mask and zoom in as much as you need to to make sure that this is pretty accurate. We're gonna be blurring this out as well. So all of those minor details will be kind of faded away anyway. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. The better the selection, the better it looks. So right here is good. Once you are at where you need it to be, add a keyframe under control points and then just go frame by frame. You can skip a couple frames also if you wanna use less frames. And then just move these back to the original place that it was, making sure that this looks like so. 
So play it through and see what it looks like. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna go back to fit. If I push play, it'll look like this. Again, right here in the very beginning, it's a bit jittery. You can go back and of course fix that. I'm not gonna take the time to do that, but you guys get the point. So <laughs> once you're here, we're gonna add a blur because it's too sharp. So we're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna go up and go to the blur. We're gonna add a focus blur and then we're gonna zoom in to about 200%. With the focus blur enabled, click and drag this so it's in front of the vehicle. It's gonna be about here actually. Once it's like that, you can go over to the amount and increase it or decrease it. I'm gonna decrease it a little bit. And if we go back and see our result and I push play, it'll look like this. If we skip the beginning, it'll look perfect as you can see. So, and yeah, that looks solid. So this is a before and an after. So really cool stuff. Play around with what you can do in Final Cut Pro 10, especially with the new update. There's many, many cool things you can do. If you do want more tutorials on the new feature, let me know with a like, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.